So many things happened in 2018. It was a year of the West Coast Eagles, but nothing was bigger than this, or I didn't take much... Uh, I didn't enjoy much more than this when TJ made this grand statement before the final series of 2018. <laughs> the great pity about Collingwood losing to West Coast is that West Coast is now very well placed to go through to the grand final. And Neil, I've got to say, I think it would be a waste of a spot in the grand final if they get there. Oh, really? Because they, they just can't, they can't perform at the MCG. Yeah, well, that's true. OK, let's take a look at the highlights of the West Coast winning the Premiership in 2018 after TJ made that statement. So here is the West Coast Eagles. Who would have thought they could do it? TJ was pretty happy when Collingwood kicked the first five goals of the grand final. But then West Coast, this is the last play. And McGovern to Vardy oh, to, to Ryan to Sheed. It's one of the great passages of play of all time, Order. Collingwood were in front for the whole grand final except when Sheed has this kick for goal. So takes the mark, he goes back on his left foot. Some will say should have been a free kick. So all bar a minute 50, they're in front of this AFL grand final. So phenomenal year for Adam Simpson, Sam Mitchell and the coaching staff so at the West Coast. I was only a minute 50 out. Yeah. You were a minute 50 <laughs> As it out. Turns and I was out. with you, TJ. Look at Nathan Buckley. I thought they would have won the Premiership Collingwood that year after you know taking down Richmond in that preliminary final day. Yeah, and they were 29 points yeah. up, weren't they, Lotto, in yeah. the first quarter of the grand final. And they got to the grand final because of what Mason Cox did against Richmond in the prelim final and the chance of uh, USA that, that reverberated around that uh, 90,000 crowd on that night. And, and that man standing up uh, the way he did, particularly in that second quarter where he kicked three goals and took the game away from Richmond. They were meant to be going back-to-back -back in their minds and it gave them a resolve to uh, come back and do it in 2019. But one of the all-time great Collingwood uh, passages of play and, and periods of the game, the second quarter of that prelim final, Mason Cox standing right up. And he was good again in the finals over the, uh, uh, yesterday, I thought. Didn't have a lot of disposals, but... He's got a great finals record, TJ. And it's only fitting that I should reflect on who won the Brownlow of that year and what a wonderful night it was too. Certainly for Tom Mitchell, who uh, won, as you can see there, four votes ahead of Collingwood Steel side bottom. And just to give you an idea of how dominant Tom Mitchell was, he averaged 38 disposals throughout that season. He'd already picked up the Lee Matthews uh, trophy for the most valuable player. Uh, big night for Clarko, as you can see there. Clarko, he was having a nightmare at the time about... I wonder if I'll ever end up back at North Melbourne. <laughs> so, work with me on that one, mate. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Tom Mitchell, just one of the all-time greats for the Hawthorne Football Club and uh, will go down as one of the all-time greats in a Brownlow sense. And he may find another club very shortly, yeah. TJ. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tom Mitchell. Uh, Isaac Heaney, one of the great marks. He won Mark of the Year in 2018. And what a ripper this is. Just uh, launching over the top of Jesse Hogue, actually standing on his back. Uh, amazing from Isaac Heaney. And... One of the more rare goals you'll ever see. I can't remember a goal like this. Jack Higgins, Damo, this one. Yeah, well, whether it was a throw under the technical side of the rulings on that, I'm so glad they didn't yeah. pay it. I think it probably is a throw, Lotto, because he does dispose of it in a way you're not meant to, but he did it so quickly and so acrobatically that it happened before the umpire could even put the whistle to his mouth, and then I think he thought, well, nah, leave it. And I'm glad he did. One of the biggest talking points of the whole year was Andrew Gaff's hit on Bray Shaw. So it was in round 23, right before the finals, a swinging arm and broke his jaw... And and Gaff got eight weeks for the incident in the end. And we, we don't think Andrew Gaff back then, he, he wasn't a dirty player. No. Um, he apologised straight away. But there was some massive angst around West Coast and also Fremantle. A young star. You see Andrew Gaff there in enormous tears. And Ross Lyon didn't, hand, it didn't like it at all. You see Adam Simpson come down. He knows. And he missed the first eight games of the next season. So uh, that missed... was a sickening incident towards the end, which was probably the most talked about incident of the whole year. Missed the premiership as a result, Brownie. And uh, there was going to be on field retribution even discussed at three-quarter time by Ross Lyon and thankfully they uh, chose not to. Just on Ross Lyon, Damo, have a look at the tension in this uh, post-match <laughs> press conference. Andrew Brayshaw was king here 100 metres off the ball. He's got a fractured jaw and four displaced teeth that are caved in and he'll be undergoing surgery tonight. So, your thoughts on the incident itself? I think it's self-evident. I got an 18 year old kid that I saw in a real mess when I come down to the room. So, and his mum in tears as I was walking in. So, um, it's not very palatable. My senior players certainly wanted retribution. And I had to stay out in the ground longer at three quarter time to settle a couple of down and say, don't bring yourself into disrepute. 
fantastic what Brayshaw has been able to go on yeah. and do, but mm. I don't think Andrew Gaff has ever been the same. No, and you can see Ross yeah. holding back then. He wanted to give yeah. more, but uh, restrained himself. So there's three after the final siren moments in this season, and Harry Taylor was one of them. This is the first one up, and he missed this one, Harry Taylor, uh, against the Western Bulldogs in round 15. The Western Bulldogs win by two points. So Harry goes back. Look at that score line there. Look at all the players on the mark, and Harry just puts it wide to the left-hand side. But Zach Tui, three weeks after that, against the Demons, goes forward, been playing defence most of the season, found himself forward, and one of the best kicks, one of the best technical kicks, and the Irish guys are really good kicks. Again, all the players on the mark, and Tui goes back and nails that one. And then McGovern as well, late in the season, round 21, against Port Adelaide. They go forward and takes a really good mark and then went back and nailed the goal as well. So this was dead straight as well and ended up winning four points after the siren. So big moments in 2018.